What is going on, y'all? So today I'm joined by Sonny. Sonny's been a uh, Elevated Midship customer and a uh, uh, member of the program for, what, like two years now? Going on two years, I think? Yeah, going on two years. Yeah, yeah I think summer it was, would be two years. Yeah, I think it was in 2019, like summer 2019. Um, and Sonny has a really cool story. So, I, you know, like for him, I never really knew who he was until like we had a call first time. And even on that first call, we were just talking about right now, he almost didn't join. Um, and uh, we'll get into like the why of that, really his journey. And then also to, you know, just his experience throughout the program and after and like what he's learned and then also what's to come. Because, I mean, how old are you first and foremost? Cause I, I know you're pretty young. 23, December 17th. Got you. So we started working when you were 21. Um, yeah. I guess for the viewer or even listener who doesn't know or familiar who with the, who you are, dude, um, catch us up like real quickly. Like, how'd you get into cutting hair? Kind of your backstory. Um, I guess until like we, I guess met. Yeah. Uh, so how I got into cutting hair, um, I guess it began. So that was like high school summer. Uh, I think it was the summer before senior year. And, um, yeah, just working, I'm uh, the oldest of four. So I'm, you know, I'm number four and I have three younger siblings. But, yeah, working, like, I had a job or two. But uh, that was a whole, like, situation with my, me and my mom. So she ended up making me quit pretty much. And my hair grew out. She wouldn't give me no money. And I was, like, begging her for weeks to, like, give me money for a haircut. So she decided to just throw me clippers instead and said, figure it out. So <laughs> I literally, like, had to just get in the bathroom. Like, I really didn't have a choice. So I was on YouTube. I think the first person I watched, it was like the first video I ever watched was like some random like YouTuber barber. He just took, uh, showed, it was like basic like steps to how to fade, like one, two, you know, the the guidelines and all that. But um, I ended up coming across a 360 Jeezy's page. And that's where I really went into it because like, you know, he's a character. So it was more than just watching the YouTube videos. Like it was entertaining. So like I just kept doing that every week. I was in the mirror for like four or five plus hours, like trying to learn how to fade my hair. And it just, it got easier and easier as I got along. But um, that was really the start without me knowing it because once I graduated and I went to uh, college, Kennesaw State University, with three other um, of my peers from high school, we, um, I was in Atlanta at the time and Kennesaw State is like 30 minutes from, you know, my home. So I was commuting back and forth because the um, housing was just super expensive, like from, you know, the tuition I got for just the school itself. So, yeah, commuting back and forth, and I would stay with my friend for, like, a week at a time, come home on the weekends, you know, pack a bag, whatnot. And he had a um, a little Walmart, you know, the Walmart bag where, you know, you have the little cheap wall and the, the uh, trimmer and all that. So he would cut his hair and, like, two other people. And then I started using his because, like, when I left home, I didn't have the, um, the uh, clipper anymore. And, yeah, one day I was like, bro, let me cut your hair. Because I got so good at mine, I was just like, well, I felt like I was more confident. So let me cut your hair. I cut his hair. Then after that, like, it was decent enough for him to wear it around. So I just he just kept coming back, and I just kept cutting his hair, kept cutting his hair. And then after a while, like, between, like, two jobs, school, me commuting back and forth, because I was in the nursing program. And that was just, that was hell. Like, I couldn't, there was nothing for me to do. Like, it was, I was just locked in. I had no life. So. I, had, I really had to, like, figure things out because I was just about to, I was getting close to, like, getting into the actual, like, nursing school. So, yeah, I took a semester off, took a refund check. I think it was, like, $600. Like, went to Amazon, bought a barber kit for that much. So I spent the whole 600 on, like, barber supplies. I was, I'm going to take a semester off. If this goes well, well I'm going um, to just keep running with it. And then if it doesn't, I'm just going to go back to school. Like, I just gave myself two ultimatums, and that's it. So, yeah. After that semester, like, it, it took it took off enough for me to, like, give it all my energy. So after that semester, I didn't go back to school, and I just worked full-time and then worked um, and cut hair, like, on the side. And after that, like, it that's just when it took off for real. Like, just never looked back. So you, you legit almost kind of gave yourself the ultimate of, like, one semester. If it hits, good. If not, like, I, I got to, like, suck it up and go to this nursing thing. Yeah, like, that was it. And wow. I did not want to be in school anymore. So I think that's what pushed me, like, gave me that, like, super hard drive to, like, really make that. Because the semester is only, what, like, that's not even six months. Yeah, it's, like, four months, I think. Yeah, so in four months, I 
build up a good amount of clientele. Like, wow. I mean, even though I was cutting that ten dollars, it wasn't even about the money. It was just about me seeing the potential of this growing. Mm. Yeah. But I seen that more valuable than me sitting in school writing papers and you know doing something I didn't want to do all day. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so and I, I can tell, like especially from the artwork, and I, and especially work with you, you're very more artistic. Did, was that artistic side of you very, like I guess, evident even at that early on? I guess in your career. Yeah, um, it started as uh, as young as I can remember. I I remember the first time I think we were living in Albany, Georgia, at one point, and I don't know why this is such a vivid memory, but I literally was drawing. I was watching Teen Titans, and I took a sheet of paper and I drew like um, what was his name Robin, the team leader or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think I had a comic book or something, and I literally drew him on a piece of paper, and I brought it to my parents, and they literally could, like, they could not believe I drew that. They thought, like, I printed it or something. So, like, from then on, like, I was drawing heavy. Like, I thought, at one point, I really wanted to be, like, an artist and create artwork. Like, that, not mm -hmm. like that, but, you know, some type of artwork. I wanted to be published and all that good stuff. So, the artistic side was always there, like, as long as I can remember. But, you know, growing up, we don't really get taught that that's something you can turn into an actual, you know, career or uh, um, money, some, you know, into money or something. Absolutely. So you gave yourself the ultimatum. You started building up a clientele. You're charging $10. Then what happened next? Um, $10, I think that was, yeah, because within that $600 little case, I had a briefcase. So I would just, I was pulling up on people. Like, I would drive... At, I think the farthest I drove was like 30 minutes. And I only charged an extra $5 for house calls. So I was pulling up on people all types of night and everything. And um, I got my apartment. And that's when I started cutting out of my apartment. That went on for six months or a summer. Um, I, I believe, yeah, I believe like a summer or six months. But once I was doing that for a while, my best friend actually called a shop nearby like way back and she called me and told me that she been did this and she forgot about it so i went by there and um you know hey like someone called such and such of course i didn't remember you know people call all the time and say stuff like that so i went by there i showed the manager my work um and he didn't believe me of course because like at the time like i was that was around the time like vic was really like blowing up with those videos like posting like three or four times a day so, you know, just me seeing an example like that, I was like, okay, maybe this is something I can try. So I had a lot of videos on my Instagram page, pictures, you know, of cuts I've been doing. And they were they were pretty decent for, you know, how I learned. So he just respected the fact that, you know, I had a page, you know, I was professional. Um, I already had a clientele and I was I was charging 15 to 20 at that time. Mm. So, yeah, that was the time I got into my first shop. And I think that lasted for a year and a half. Or two, and you were on two years. You you were unlicensed, like you just got in, like just kind of yeah, working yeah. Un under the radar, like yeah, just just off pure skill set and, and just the hustle. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So after that ended, what what did you do? Did you go to a different shop? Did you start going into barber school? I guess what was the journey after that? Yeah. yeah so during that time, um, I think within like six months, I started a school at uh, CEI. It's um in downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm still currently enrolled because um that's yeah, that was in Atlanta and, you know, Kennesaw, 30, 45 minutes away, traffic. Yeah. Going back and forth. I didn't really have a vehicle at the time. So, you know, I would go to school, then I would stop. I would go to school, and I would stop. So it just prolonged the journey. Like, I've been in school for, like, two years. Mm -hmm. So, but I should be finishing up, like, within a few months. But, um, yeah, I started barber school when I was when I got into my first shop. Um, that went on and off. And um, that was really, like, the first shop in barber school was really just a big learning experience for me, like, me being me being solely taught off social media and seeing, you know, examples like like even you, I saw your page, I, like you, Vic, um, everybody, like the whole elegance team, Babless, just the whole world of social media, barbering, like what it could be. And me being in the neighborhood shop where these guys, you know, they, they don't really respect social media. Like they, they think it's a rules or a scam or anything like that. Nobody in there has a license. So it's just I learned a lot of like what not to do, like and mm. what I don't want to end up like because yeah. these were guys like way older than me cutting for 20 30 years yeah you know the typical old school barber but um yeah uh, like through that i think after that two years i ended up going to another shop um and that's where i'm still currently at now but um 
it was a better team, same kind of mindset. Yeah. But, you know, I, I kind of have more people, like a younger crowd around me that's, you know, more, it's closer to the mindset that I have. You know, everybody's not so old and, you know, stuck in the old school barber way. So, I mean, that's currently where I'm at now as far as just, you know, shop cutting and stuff. Still in school. I, I should be finished before June. So I think that's phenomenal, know, though. Like, like I yeah. always tell people about, like, um, I thought you had your license, but I, like I always tell people about South Bay Chris, who was charged like a hundred before he even got licensed. Like he was still in school. You're you're now up to seventy five, and I mean I think that would be that would be incredible to get you up to a hundred even before you you graduate. Which yeah. Being, uh, like because like most people in like uh, barbers when I talk to them, they think that piece of paper matters so much when it really doesn't. It just matters. Can you run your business properly? Now, right. I know when talking with you when we first talked. The biggest thing I, I remember, like the biggest objection you were giving me on our first call of like if you were going to join or not was like, I don't know if it was possible because of or like to grow your business because you were in a college, more college town in uh, Kennes Kennesaw, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So like I remember you telling me a lot about like, oh, I just have a lot of, you know, that we just get a lot of um, college students and there was like a lot of like that uh, hesitation, doubt. I guess how how did you previously build up your clientele at this new shop? Was it more of just taking the walk ins like traditional way, or what did you do? Um, same thing. But at, uh, so when I moved to the new shop, I was already fully booked out, mm -hmm. and I think that was yeah. I I moved up to thirty when I joined your program. So yeah, when I before I joined your program, I was at twenty five, and I think thirty for cut. I'm a beard or twenty to twenty five for a beard or whatever. Um, but yeah, I was fully booked out at that point. Like I wasn't, it was, it was unheard of in me to take a walk in because I just, my schedule was always full because I was still, um, yeah, parts of the year on and off in school. So sometimes my schedule will, like fluctuate, like it'll shorten. So, you know, it was just less spots, but, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was already booked out going into the new shop. Got it. So yeah. let's go back to at least like getting you into the program. Um, I remember on call, we were talking about this prior, you, you, you like, you legit almost didn't join. You're like, ah, uh, no, I don't think this is right for me. And, and I, I remember just kind of stopping and being like, dude, like you, cause you, I saw the makeup in you of like, you were great. You could cut hair phenomenally. It was like that little bit of doubt. And I just told you like, if you don't make a decision, like to just do something for yourself, cause I can tell you would always like think about other people or other surroundings. Like you would never, there, there, there would, there would be like this delay in the growth. I guess what was going on yeah. on, on like your head, I guess, like at that point in time. Um, as far as like the doubt when it came to joining the program, absolutely. Um, I mean, one definitely the biggest thing was the money, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like me charging what I was charging, and even like making, even still, like I was making decent money for somebody my age, you know, versus working at a regular nine to five. But still, like we're not taught how money works. Like I'm just making the money. Like I don't know that. You know, I can afford certain things if I, you know, move things around or do things, certain things. But, um, yeah, a part of me just, I don't know, I wasn't used to that hearing about that amount of money being dropped or spent. So, me just hearing it, no matter what was behind it or, you know, what what you would tell me about mm. the program, it was just like, I didn't have it. I was just like, it's no way I can afford this. Like, I was like, it's no way. Like, it, like I just couldn't see it. But, yeah, and also, like, just the... The growth in the business, like what I what I didn't understand is just like, or what I didn't probably want to understand is just like the sacrifices that you have to make when it comes to, like elevating. Like mm. you can't hold on to everything. You can't hold on to your old clients. You can't hold on to old habits if you want to grow. Like that's just that's how it works. That's just how it is. So like I think, especially me, but I, I think a lot of people get caught up in, especially when raising prices, you lose a lot of clients, especially starting out like in the beginning, like a lot of those people are your friends, high school um, people, college people, like people you built relationship over the years. So for you to be doing the service for them and you charging them a certain amount and then you hear their mouth like, oh man, like you going, no, I don't know. It kind of makes you feel bad. You know, if you don't have somebody in your ear coaching you or like, hey, this is not, you're not in the wrong. Like you're not being, you're not doing bad, but mm -hmm. this is just wrong. Like it's just natural. Like that happens. Like, but yeah, it's just like, you get so caught up in like, your friends like you don't want to let them go you don't want to you know you want to be there for them i want to keep charging you twenty dollars thirty dollars for the rest of you know i want to it's so 
I think that's what it was, like just the biggest thing, like letting go of a lot of things that I was already used to. Yeah, what, what I was about to say, like what shift just in that moment of the call? Because I was like, I was like, oh, he's probably not going to join. <laughs> Honestly, like I said that, I was like, he's probably not going to join. He's probably going to be one of those people that just I look back two years from now still in the same place. So I guess like what what's shifted for you like in that split second? Uh, I think prior to the program, like, like I said, like Chris, like South Bay Chris was what really, he was what really brought a lot of light to me about the program because when I seen his account, we were both like at the same amount of follow. He was posting the videos. I was posting the videos and I just seen this like rapid growth. I was like, bro, like what is going on? Like I'm trying to like really figure this out. And I seen that he joined the program, you know, we talked and everything. And I think in that moment, like, for so long, I was, I've was i been struggling to figure it out. Like, how how is Vic doing it? How did South Bay just do it? How are the, all these barbers, like, like, just shooting up like this? And I think in that moment, like, I, I just realized how long I've been struggling and, like, getting nowhere. And I was just like, this is not going to change that. So it's either I just either do this or just go back to the my same routine, like, of me just aimlessly trying to figure this out. Yeah. And I think I realized I probably will, wouldn't have ever figured it out if I didn't go through the, with this program, so. Yeah. And I still say that to this day. Like, if I if I didn't go through this program, I probably would have still been in the same position charging 20 25 maybe $30 now. Yeah. Like, two years I, later. I think that was a pivotal shift for you because you were almost, you were shifting your paradigm, like you said before, of, like, not only the investment side of things, but also just, like, I think a lot of younger barbers, too, like, they have – there's always like this ego whenever you're young right i, I have yeah. this too all the time where you're like ah oh, what is he gonna teach me i can do this on my own type of deal like I, I think it's just like breaking that like mold and that 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 uh paradigm like just completely of course we we it took like a, maybe a month or so till we really started getting things together for you so yeah. i guess go you know we we got you in the program obviously we started working together what was kind of like those initial like moments for you? Because you actually did struggle a little bit, like even early on, I remember. Like what was kind of going on for you early on in the program? I think it was a habit. It's like I don't I don't think I was I don't think I came to terms of like how hard it really is like to break habits and like to break like to change your mindset. Like it's hard to get out of like your ways. Like the things that you've been like I was what, twenty one at that point? Like I feel like I was growing, you know, I didn't did things on my own. I, you know, you, you develop a sense of like, like you said, ego, like, it's like, there's no way, like, you know, this should be hard. I pay this money. It should just happen. Like, so yeah. the amount of effort that I realized, like it was actually going to take, that's what was, you know, that's what happened when that slow, I, that, you know, the slow progress, like, it's just hard. I tell people all the time, it's hard. It's not going to be easy. Like, yeah, but you shot up though. Like once, cause I remember, I remember like when we would talk, there would be, conversations that we had where i was like oh it's clicking right there was like like subtle things where i could see like the like y y it was it was all coming together for you um i guess fast forward to today because you at that point in time when you before you joined the program you're charging 25 i do believe mm -hmm. like once we got you in like i was just like dude go up to 30 you're already booked out there's no reason let's make yeah. a little bit more in extra income now you're at 75 today what do you think mm -hmm. is like the biggest difference between sunny today charging 75 looking to then go up to 100 uh versus Sonny, who was cutting 25, cutting his friends. Like, what is the biggest difference between those two people? Because those are very different individuals. Um, I would have to say mindset. Mm. Mindset, really, like, I just see everything in a different window now. Like, it, 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 nothing, I wasn't having the same conversations in or thinking the way I was thinking back then that I am now. Like, I felt bad even charging people 30. I was like, oh, my God, it's so much money. Like, are you sure you want to give me this? <laughs> <laughs> but I, was like, I love you dude that's hilarious back, like, for real like yeah. even when people booked the 45 i was like oh my god like thank you like you're you don't understand like this is so much money mm. and now like at 50 even at 75 i'm just like this is nothing for real like like this is nothing for somebody who who actually puts in the effort like who's who's producing results who's putting in the work like running a business like that's just that's just what it is. Like, there's mm. a clientele. I understand that there's a clientele for every price point. So, it, yeah, the biggest thing is just the mindset. It's just everything is brought, like, seen to me in a different light. Nice. I, and I know for you, when you joined, the program was kind of like, because I was talking with Burr earlier, and, and South Bay Chris was also part of, like, that first initial program. And you were kind of, like, mm -hmm. in the re reconstruction state of the program, where it was more shifting more to business and mindset and, like, 
what it takes to actually run a business, not just like to be on social media. That still was like the marketing, right. everything was really heavy, but we were shifting more towards that. And especially you've gone mm -hmm. through the program, the updated version now where it's like completely like, we probably only have one week of, of <laughs> marketing and everything else is the business structure financially. Uh, everything yeah. that has to happen inside of a business to scale properly as a barber to then eventually remove yourself maybe five years from now. What do you say is like, especially if today's program has been, had the most impact on you and you find found the most valuable today? You said in today's program? Yeah, yeah, in the updated oh, version. The financial, the financial part, like biggest, the biggest help that I probably have gotten from the program, like even today, like you don't realize like, like I said, we don't get taught money. So until you start tracking every dollar, writing down what you made, writing down, you know, what you spend and, and putting things in organ, like you don't like seeing it, it's crazy. Like the numbers you see about mm. like what you spend, what you make. And it, I mean, it really does help you run your business a lot more. It, 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 it gives you, I think it, it gives you like a sense of like, I don't know, urgency to like. Gives you bigger balls. <laughs> yeah like it, it gives you bigger balls too. Yeah. like it, it's just like you you know you just it gives you a certain sense of like confidence like it's just clarity on the whole thing like yeah. i think i mean i'm sure you ran the I, I used to run my business the same way of like i just used to have like a little lock box i put under my bed of all the cash and like <laughs> i would just count up that cash and like think my business is going good but like that's far from the truth like you know, in terms of just like profit per cut, cash flow in, cash flow out, where are you bleeding money at, business expenses, personal expenses. Um, yeah. I know for you too, mindset has been a big like just shift, shifting point for you. Um, I guess, you know, what is your take or like what has been like the biggest paradigm shift for you overall as a barber from, you know, 21 years old to today? Um, it doesn't have to be about the program, just overall in general. And also too, I know you're a dad now too. So that probably has a huge impact on you as well. Yeah. Huge. So the difference in just well barbering, uh for me personally, like I grew up in the hood, like, you know, the typical the whole whatever. But um you don't look at certain professions as barbering as as an actual profession. It's just a it's a side hustle. You just get the money, you collect your cash and you go do whatever else you do afterward. And like now, like it's I see it as something that can actually support like my family long term too that is so like just the difference in that like it, i take it a lot more serious now like everything the financial side the the marketing even behind the chair like everything is like given is given like a hundred percent of my attention because it's not just some side hustle anymore it's not just me cutting neighborhood people i understand that i have to grow this business you know so i'm not doing this for 10 20 30 years like mm. That's not that's not a successful business. Like you don't want to keep doing the same thing, the same labor, but um, if you have a business for that long, like it's it becomes redundant at a certain point. You get to hating it. It's just it gets tiring. And then you go off and try to branch off and do something else, and takes you away. It just yeah. You just yeah. It just I, remember, explodes. I remember you want to do YouTube with the cars, and I was just kept on shooting yeah. that down. Like <laughs> you're like, why do you gotta bring that up? But I remember you, you were like, hey, bro, I really want to do a YouTube on these car things, man. Like I want to show off my. I'm like, don't do it, shiny object. Like yeah. I think even Looks just right. pe people in general, like I, I hear about barbers. You know, they don't take care of the business side of things, but they're like. They're buying everything else, like the, the fancy car, whether it be like, um, you know, new clothes or just even trying to like start something up on the side and it just never works out. And I think um, I'm glad. That, I mean, like you're one of the best people I think I've ever met inside the program, too, by the way, like one of the most humble like people in the program. I, I always love talking to you, dude, because it's always, it's always I just always laugh. You're just like this this dude that um, it's always good energy. Um, and. I was always very just like whenever working with you, I was just like, oh, please, Sonny, do not go this way. Please don't do it. <laughs> like, I know it looks fun, but I don't do it. I always heard it in your voice, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was like... You know, sometimes you just got to push the envelope, man. I was yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to try to do it. <laughs> I mean, I definitely, I was, I mean, like on anybody in the program, I'm definitely hard and, and, and expect the best out of you, too. And And I think just seeing your growth and also hearing like conversations that you have with, you know, even new customers in the program, right? Talking about the way that you're like, hey, you got to take this shit seriously. I yeah. can tell like just how your mindset is shifting. That, honestly, that makes me proud as, as hell of you. Because like just how young you are, dude, I mean, it, it's it's incredible to see your growth. Um, I guess like giving a little bit of foreshadowing for yourself and and, and um, 
what what what's to come in this next year? Like in the next twelve months, what do you have planned? Um. So as far as all the growth, me going through the program, everything I've done so far, I also realize in hindsight, like I haven't, like I'm not perfect. I haven't given this. Well, I haven't felt like I've given this 100%. Because mm. like you said, like at some point I wanted to do YouTube. At some point I wanted to have a, a clothing line. And it's just like, I feel like growing up, like you get in this thing, like where you, you want to, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And you feel successful. But we don't realize if we just lock in into this one lane and just give it our all for a certain amount of time, or like until we just hit a certain goal, that's all you need, and then you move on to the next. Not do five things at one time. So, saying that, like the next for the rest of the year, like Barber is getting my full attention, mm. like every day, like videos. I'm every day, like it don't like every day, every day. What we nothing charge- else is getting my uh, attention. What we charging? You gonna give it? You gonna give it a shot? Call it that, or you gonna you gonna keep it locked in? <laughs> I can hey, always, man. you can already, <laughs> hey, because it was hard enough getting you up to go up to seventy five. We had to have a this man had I to know. fly out to L A to come talk to me just to talk get him up to seventy five. So it was, <laughs> we're definitely gonna get you up to a hundred by the end of the year. But I wanna I wanna even see about one fifty for you if you really lock in. Dude, you're talented. You know you know how talented you are and how special you are too in terms of this barber game. And I actually. Honestly, too, how many barbers look up to you? Like, I get a lot of people who actually honestly look up to you that I don't think you understand either. And I think that's always I don't very, think it clicked yet. I yeah. I don't think it really clicked. And that's fine. But, like, I think that's just one thing I definitely want to acknowledge you on just because, like, people do you, – you have become that dude for some people, right, in terms of, like, they see you. They see you how focused you are and how serious now you're taking it. Um, you know, and that just puts more responsibility on your hands, not only, you know, with your career, um, but just pushing it forward, right? And, and I think that's the major thing of, like, I think I think even when I talked to you first, you were always f- so focused on inspiring, right? I think that I think you were more focused, like you wanted to like inspire the ne- like barbers, just like all these other guys. And I think what, what some people get wrong is like you have to the way you inspire is just by locking in and, and improving your thing, not tr- by yeah. trying to inspire, like because then you just look needy. So it's a confirmation that you do that you've been doing the right inputs to get the outputs that you've always wanted, um, and there's just more more to come. I guess wrapping up right now because um, we we did hop on here a little late, but I know my, <laughs> somebody didn't somebody didn't have Skype logged in. But Grandpa over here, they don't know how to work Skype. <laughs> we ain't gonna point fingers. Um, I, I guess for any advice that you would give to somebody, maybe who is like similar situations, you whether they're on the fence, they have that doubt of like, is the program gonna work for me? Where my business is at? Um, you know, it, I'm in a such and so such and such area, or even if they're on the call and they're like, oh man, they're just doubting themselves. What advice do you have for them? Um, what advice? You know, it's crazy. I like this would have been easy, but after like <laughs> going through like the training with you and all that, like you were such a hard ass on me and stuff. Like now that I'm that person to people, so like you, I'd be like, oh yeah, take the chance and all this stuff. But I realized like this shit is not easy, and I know a lot of people is not going to do it. Mm-hmm. Like the situation with Tim, that completely like turned me off from like. I just tell you, you either do it or you don't. Like yeah, it's. There is no trying to figure out something before you get into it. You have to experience for yourself. Like that is the only way you're going to see any type of change for your own. Like, don't look towards anybody else. Or if he's doing this, he's, the program, me taking a program is not going to look like the same for somebody else taking a program. It's all within your own situation, and it's all how you take it. Lock into your own life, your business, and and just just like get rid of all everything else around you and just lock in. Like, there's no other way to do it. Like, we try to find these alternate routes and hey like can you tell me about this and for what mm. for what like at the end of the day i'm either going to do this or not like mm. the decision is up to me up to me and it's ultimately ultimately up to you at the end of the day too so you either do or you don't but i just just ask yourself do you like your current situation mm. is this how you really want to be this could be the chance to change all that like it all it just takes one moment that's it just one moment it's yeah, fun. Not, it's yeah. fun. It's funny, dude, because literally everybody I've talked to on like these interviews also is the same thing. It's not for everybody because it is a lot of work. Like there, it does take a special individual, and like that's just again kudos to you and also everybody in the program um, because it it building a business is hard. And dude, you, you're you're a testament to like what it like what happens when you actually go all in with it. So, Sunny, appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you, always talking to you, and uh, yeah, destroy all that. We'll get you up to one fifty in the next twelve months. <laughs> Always. We're going to get there, man. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, no problem, brother.